Okay. Okay, so here we are going to do a, an acid base titration. I've actually got um, potassium hydrogen phthalate over here as an analyte. Note that this potassium hydrogen phthalate, we quite often call it KHP, but in fact it is not KHP, and its molar mass is 204.2 .2 grams per mole. So I've made a solution of this here. I'll put this here, and this is going to be our analyte. Our titrant is in the burette, and quite often what we do is we have the acid as our analyte, our base as our titrant. This is actually what I want to find. I've actually figured out, I actually weighed this out, the plasma hydrogen phthalate out, I'm going to standardize the base. In other words, I'm trying to figure out the, um, the concentration of this. So first things first, let's look at the results here. And if you look here, the bottom of the meniscus, and you might need to use a piece of paper here, is just below the 13 line, but just below here. And so this is going to be, I would say it's about 13.04. Because this is graduated to every 0.1 milliliters, you have to report this to the nearest 0 0.01 milliliters. So now, I need to add some indicator. An indicator changes color when it is neutralized. In other words, you, design, you pick an indicator so that your, when the number of moles of acid equals the number of moles of base, it changes color. In this case, we use phenophthalene. I put a few drops here. I shake this up. And then I am going to do titration by turning this, and I'll just put it in like this. It actually, and as you can see, as it goes in, you can see a little bit of pink in there. But if you shake it, it goes away. So it's not reached that point yet. It has not reached. This process actually takes a little patience. So right now you can see that the pink is starting to stay in a bit more. So you put it in a bit slower, one drop at a time. Just put it in. And it helps to have a white piece of paper here just to so that you can see when it actually turns pink. You want the faintest shape. Ideally, you want to see the faintest shade of pink. As you can tell, this is more of a skill than, than an art than anything else, and it takes patience to get and practice to get right. So I don't expect everyone's titrations to be right the first time round. I will explain how you can go a little bit faster in a minute on your after your first trial. For a given example. So staying there. Now you see it's taking a couple of seconds to get rid of it, so it's getting close, so I'm... But now is when you need to...
So now you see that you've added the last drop, turned it pink, and it's gone completely pink. Okay, I probably had a big drop here. So let's have a look at the volume here. Here, remember you look at the bottom of the meniscus and note that the barrette goes downwards. So just below 28 is 28 point something. Below 28.1, I would say 28.16 milliliters. So, a, a couple of hints. When you know this volume, you would then, in fact, know that it's got to be 28 minus 13.16 minus 13.04 is 15.12 milliliters. So you know that the volume to be delivered is about 15 milliliters, give or take. So what you can do, you can actually deliver 14 milliliters straight off the bat, 14 or so milliliters straight off the bat, and then go in drop by drop by drop after that. That would speed your titration up. The second thing is, when you redo the next type, do the next type round of the titration, two things. One, you don't actually have to start at zero. As you can tell, I didn't start at zero. In fact, there is a benefit to not doing that because you can see lines above and below. Secondly, here, 28, I still have about 22 milliliters. I've got enough to do another round of this titration without refilling the burette. It's safe to refill the burette, but here I can just go ahead. It's pretty safe for me to just go ahead and start the titration from this point on. Thirdly, make sure you have no air bubbles in your burettes and pipettes. So now let's look at how we figure out the molarity of sodium hydroxide from this titration result. The molarity of the KHP solution, now let us figure out the molarity of the sodium hydroxide that we have given the molarity of the KHP solution which is 0.1499 molar and the volume required to neutralize 10.00 milliliters of KHP, which is 15.12 milliliters of NaOH. Now, let's think about this. It might be easier in this one not to do straight dimensional analysis, but rather think about the definition of molarity, which is moles of NaOH per liter of solution. To do this, Let's break this down and figure out the moles of sodium hydroxide first. And so the moles of NaOH is, we start with, and, the, and KHP is actually a monoprotic acid. So you have KHP, okay, plus NaOH reacting to form Kp mi minus plus Na plus plus H2O. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio of KHP and NaOH. In any event, the number of moles of NaOH, let's start with the, the volume of KHP. You always start with the amount of the other substance in these types of problems. I convert milliliters to liters. Oops. 1 litre is 1,000 millilitres. Cancel this out. I have litres. And then I know that in every litre of the solution, I have 0 0.1499 moles of KHP. And then there is 1 mole of KHP for every mole of sodium hydroxide. When I do this, I find that I have 0 0.001499 moles of NaOH that has reacted. The liter solution is the lead, is the volume of NaOH delivered. So, in this case, Therefore, I can find the molarity of NaOH by saying I have 0 0.001499 moles of NaOH divided by the liters of solution. Now, here I have 
15.12 milliliters. And I have 1000 milliliters in a liter. And this comes to 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.09911.